We're following breaking news out of Monsey, New York. Five people were injured in a stabbing spree last night. They were all members of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community and were gathered for a Hanukkah celebration at the time of the attack. Joining me now is Evan Bernstein, New York, New Jersey Regional Director with the Anti-Defamation League. My understanding is you were on the scene last night. Can you talk a little bit about how the community there is responding? It's our understanding that, that services resumed after this attack. Yeah, it did. I got to, uh, thank you, Jared. I got, I got on the ground uh, about 11 o'clock last night and actually just left uh, Muncie about six o'clock this morning. So I was there overnight and uh, dealing with the community, dealing with law enforcement. And actually before the crime scene was fully uh, blocked off, I was able to actually get to the rabbi uh, in his synagogue, which is next to the house where the stabbings took place, where he was still performing services and uh, was moving on. And it was, you know, praying for the victims, praying for the family member that was stabbed. And it was really uh, a sight to behold to see this community who was you know, reeling from such pain, but still, still trying to celebrate the, the, the holiday of Hanukkah. And it's, it was really a testament to their, their faith. We don't yet know anything really about the motive in this attack, and we can see the facts of what happened here. I'm wondering, how do you, how will authorities assess whether or not this was a hate crime, whether or not uh, these folks were targeted specifically because of their religion? Well, I know, you know, there was a tremendous amount of uh, coordination between law enforcement in Rockland County and with the New York City Police Department with the apprehension so shortly after the stabbing yesterday. And I know uh, there's a lot that's going to be done still continuously with, uh, you know, the FBI uh, and state police to be able to, you know, find out what's happened. The person has been apprehended. They're going to do everything in their power, I'm sure, to find out the motives, uh, ensure that the person was potentially a lone wolf, uh, that there wasn't other people involved, and to try to find out exactly why this happened. I think that's been one of the biggest questions that's on everyone's mind in Muncie. I was talking with, you know, so many uh you know, people that were there, there was, you know, close to 100, almost 100 plus people, you know, at the, at the crime scene as it was happening last night. And their biggest fear is, is why? And, and, they, and they want those questions answered. And they know what's happened uh, in New York City uh, over the past week with the speed of, uh, you know, attacks that have taken place almost on a daily, almost hourly basis. And before that, uh, Jersey City, you know, the Jersey City murders mm -hmm. took place and then the acts of domestic care. It's affecting the ultra-Orthodox community in a very negative way, and there's a lot of fear right now. Yeah, can you expand on that a little bit? I mean, there has been this string of attacks, anti-Semitic attacks in and around New York. Does the ADL have any idea what's fueling this, where this is coming from? You know, we've seen a rise of anti-Semitism across the country, and there's definitely different kinds of anti-Semitism. There's anti-Semitism on the right, there's anti-Semitism on the left, and there's even anti-Semitism in the middle, and the Jews kind of get squished. What we're seeing now a lot of is, is within other minority groups, unfortunately, that are involved with uh, the attacking uh, the nature of the Jews right now. And we're seeing more and more of that. And I think we need to figure out why this is happening. A lot of the theories that we've seen, especially in the greater metro New York areas, there's a lot of issues with gentrification, mm. a lot of issues with you know lack of communication, and, and just unfortunate old stereotypes about Jews, canards that are now rearing their head. So th there's a lot of, uh, you know, speculation, but we need to do a better job. And that's where we need the help of law enforcement and elected officials to help us get more information from these perpetrators. And so many of them, unfortunately, are under the age of 18, the juveniles. So we have to get even especially more careful as we're dealing with young people and these issues. And we're seeing more and more uh, of these things happening with, with young kids that are actually the ones that are uh, making the physical assaults and actually you know, doing the crimes themselves. That's really concerning to us. A lot of folks outside these communities, frankly, don't know much about them. How can outsiders be helpful? How can they educate themselves? What can you know, other folks do to be involved in this, it, both on the issue of this particular attack and on addressing this kind of uh, anti-Semitism that you were just discussing more broadly? I think it's important to, you know, to obviously be aware of what's going on uh, in our society, you know, read the news, figure out what's going on. These, these groups that typically are more insulated and are not necessarily mm -hmm. going to be, uh, you know, doing things socially with other groups in the same way that you may be used to seeing other Jewish groups. It's important to understand that they're just practicing their religion and they're, they're trying to do exactly what every American wants to do, which, which is the freedom of practicing their religion in the way they want. They're not hurting anybody. And they want to be able to live a very comfortable and peaceful existence. And just because some of their social norms are not the norm for our society does not mean that they should be targeted. So I think learning about why uh, Orthodox Jews do what they do and, and their lives are on Jewish continuity and how they practice their religion is, is sometimes mistaken for, uh, you know, for being 
uh, wanting to be outsiders, when in reality, that's just the faith that they have, and, and, and they really are open to having conversations and wanting people to learn about them. But, they, you know, it's about wanting to be proactive in doing that and not just judging a book by its cover, but learning more about why people behave the way they do and, and, and practice the religion the way they do. I really appreciate that. Evan Bernstein from the Anti-Defamation League, thank you very much for coming on with us this morning.